Hello, everyone. Right, let me just find our video for the night. Scroll. Oh, no, not there yet. Oh, I found it. So I'm going to be positive. I believe my iPad's going to be on loud though, so we feel that now. Right. Now you get to see my lovely washed hair. Oh. Oh, hello Raquel, hello D. Hello Don YouTube. Um, so this is the page that we did last week for anyone who missed it. The video is up on my YouTube channel and is on in the Creative Family group. Um, we are streaming this obviously to two places, YouTube and Facebook, depending on what your device likes. You can choose which one you like, no problem at all. I see both of your comments and I forgot to put water in my cup, so we'll deal with that later. So tonight, we have a few options for our mixed media bundle, which is why the bundle will not have an official photo on it until sometime in the future. Uh, so we've got these new chipboard strips and these butterflies, which I think we could use both of. Like, not going to lie. Happy to use both. I don't think this will be the problem of choosing. I think we can use both of them. Well, hello, Tash. So, like, you know, we've got a good range of chipboard there. Well, we could just use one, either up to you guys, but I do like both of them. They're both new. And then the choice is the stencil. Well, hello, Sandra. So we've got three stencils. I prefer to, like, we could, and saying that we could use two stencils and one chipboard. It's up to you guys. Or we could just use one stencil and two chipboards. Once again. Oh, hello, Cheryl. Huh? Yes, they are They are awesome, aren't they? Um, oh, hello, Pam. So we've got three stencils. Now, they look a little bit similar, but we've got... So this is the big wave. Mm -hmm. This is stripes, which is kind of like... I guess you could call it a zebra print. And this is like a candy wrapper, I guess you could call it. We called it stripes too, so... No, which one would you guys prefer to see? We've got lots of options on this one. I reckon, like, we could probably actually... We could do something funky if we had two stencils. And then did it like... This, and then you only have, like, diagonal in it. And then we could use the butterflies. Maybe not... The heartbeats or the barbed wire, although we could come and use the barbed wire and not the butterfly, like just look how cute it was. I'm sold. I reckon funky is good. We'll see if we use both chipboards. I reckon I'm gonna use two stencils tonight though, just to get like this funky effect going. Uh it may not work, so do not hold your breath on it, um, is the next <laughs> point I would love to make. Gosh, these stencils are perfect. They fit right there. So if we just come in, or oh, we could come in with... That might get a bit confusing. Simpler is easier when we're doing something complex. Anything that's new or complex... Stick with simple first, and then go to hard. Right. So we've got that there. So we've got our two stencils lined up. Well, we did until my hands flicked them. And now we need a sponge. We're going to try this funky thing first, because it's best to know if this is going to work before we do anything else. I just really don't have a sponge. Actually, hold up. What color are we going to use? 
because I've got lots of colours. Mm. Well, you guys have a look at my colours. I've nearly got every colour but red. And I think that's for obvious reasons. I am just grabbing a sponge from my mum's area because I did forget to grab sponges. I did just go and read my mum's sponge stash. Has anyone come up with any colours I would like to see? Okay. Like, we've got blues. What colour did we do last week? Oh, we did a very out there colour palette. We did, that's right, we did orange, blue, purple, and green. Very out there. We might not do something so out there this time. Could do this nice muted pink, I reckon. A bit of purple. Ooh, we can I add in a coloured pencil or two. What about we add in that colour? I do like. I think that will look really nice. And we can add in maybe... It's lead, by the way, not the actual colour red. Now what I will say. <laughs> Yellow, orange and brown. Oh! We could actually try that. Let's. So we've got that color palette, or yellow, orange, and brown. Let's have a look. So we've got that yellow is. Um, is it empty? Yeah. That yellow is empty. I don't know why I'm keeping it. I'm holding it, I guess. We could use a fluorescent yellow. Fluorescent. I'm going to go with our, actually, we've got this, oh, so we've got fluorescent yellow, brown, and where's our orange? We do have a few other browns we could use. This one here, we could add in a copper. And then maybe... It's important to get your colour, like, it's okay to go on the fly sometimes, but we're doing something a little bit funky with our stencils, so I prefer to get a few things, like, sorted in the first few minutes. And I don't think that's the right brand that we're going for. And then... Amelia's getting in trouble for not choosing warm enough pajamas. Who would have thought that? Right, so we've got two colour palettes. We've got the yellow, brown, and orange, and then Sorry. we've got the pink. Wait. Tank top and boxer shorts, whether it is not. <laughs> <laughs> that is what she took. She picked for pajamas. Well, you know, oh, hi. tank top and boxer shorts. Hey mum, which colour pet do you reckon we should go for? Pam suggested this one. Raquel suggested this one. Oh. They both have pros. <laughs> oh. Right. Well, the one you don't use tonight, how about you use that Thursday night? Oh, smart idea. Which one's the most tropical? Probably that one, isn't it? It's fairly tropical-ish. Let them decide. Which one would they want Thursday night? Which one would you like Thursday? Which one would you like now? Up to you. We could both make both of them tropical. This is not. Which one do you want to use Thursday night? See, that one over there you could use with Mermaid Wishes. This one here? Yes. I could use with Mermaid Wishes. Which is wishes. not for Thursday, but now we've spilled the beans. <laughs> what are we do we're doing... Oh, we're doing T I C. Yes. By the way, they're probably going to hear that. Yes, we say Tropicana. Shh. Shh. Right. 
Um, Lukey gets around in board shorts or PJ shorts every day. Oh, goodness yeah. me. No, no. She had a pair of bombs boxer shorts and a tank top. I suppose. If we added teal to this one. I reckon don't add teal. Don't add teal. I reckon use that Thursday night. Use that Thursday. Right, we're putting this aside for Thursday. We'll put it in a container so you don't lose it. Yeah. One minute. I can't put it on the antique table behind me or else I feel like my dad's going to lynch me. And then my mum will reincarnate me to lynch me again. Look at that. It fits nicely in our spare water tub. So I think this is mum's, but I'm using it now. Thursday. Right. By the way, I'm teaching Thursday night. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. For the gigs we can. So we're going to use this colour palette here and then the other one we'll use on Thursday. I already, already forgot the date. Right, we're going to move that stencil out of the way so it doesn't get paint on them. And let's get started, shall we? I really can't judge Luca right now. I am in a pair of PJ shorts and a jersey. Um, but that's purely because I'm trying to air out my eczema. <laughs> you gotta love that winter weather. Um, okay, so just trying to think what would be best to start off with. I want this to be quite bright, but at the same time not heavy. So if I come in and if I do this brown here, just that the orange can get quite heavy quite quickly. Whereas I believe this brown, not orange, uh, this brown could be a little bit more, like it could move a bit more. It won't be bright, bright. It could also end up looking like poop brown, but you know, let's hope not. If so, we'll be playing with mud. Which is all good. We've done it before in class. We can do it again. Right, here we go. So we've got two stencils overlapping. Both are fairly simple. Don't know the frame is shaking. I'm not coming in with too much on my sponge again. I've just got as you can see, it doesn't even have fully coverage over to here. It's just mainly in one corner. And that is so that corner goes down. And then I use the bits that don't have so much paint on them to spread it out. This also means that we don't go over the edge of our stencil or underneath it. It's a good trick to use only one corner of the sponge and then use the rest of the sponge to blend it out on the base that you're dabbing with. And that just means... Looks good. Now, before we lift, this is important. We're going to try and keep it as most aligned as possible we can. Realign our stripes. As best as possible. So we'll come and do the straps that do align. They drew it by hand, they're not exactly geometric. Probably my fault there. Let's 
So we lift it back up. As you can see, we've got that bit there so far. This is why we want the simpler one. It's easier to line up when it's simpler. Or easier. If we want the more complex pattern one, we would be still on the first try. And this is also how you make a repeating pattern with your stencils. You come along one edge and you line it back up again. Most of ours you could probably make into a repeating pattern if you tried. Um, a few of ours are freehand drawn like this one, so it does take a little bit more effort. You might have to move it for certain segments to get certain bits to line up. But apart from that, like, okay, and ta-da! I think that looks pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. We could come down and do that bit. I reckon here. Uh, so what we just need to try and get where it was. There we go. And now. And so we're working off this bit here now to line it up. So we gave ourselves a little bit of an overlap so then we were able to line it up. If we didn't, we'd be eyeballing it. And, um, yeah, nah. It was the most simplest way I can put that. that problem there we go so let's see what bits didn't line up we do have a few bits that didn't line up in that segment but I do think we made it overall I have no water in my tub okay Oh, thanks, D and Debbie. Yeah, it's it's a cool effect. Oh, and hello, Karen. So, sorry. Just filling up my water tub. Because, yeah, I might have forgotten to fill it up before. So, but I do think that's quite effective. What do you guys think? Just gonna come in, do some line up like here, pretend like it always matched. 
So that's with the two stencils. So I do think that looks quite cool. And then if we came in and we do we do it. So it fits here maybe. Just slightly in the center, or what we could do it's actually, ooh, right. Because both pages don't have to be the same, same. So let's just shake up our high flow yellow, making sure that it's definitely got its lid screwed on. So you've got to shake up high flows because, as you can see, the pigment's all down here. So if we were to squeeze it currently, it wouldn't. You wouldn't get any pigment, you just get the high flow liquid. And that's how you can tell it's a good high flow because it separates. It also means that they'll stay better for longer as well. Let's take a wild shake. We haven't used them for a while. This one here we haven't used for a while. And then we just squeeze that a bit more. Oh, there we go. It just helps it out a bit. pretty good so if we just come in here we squeeze it on in kind of like a circle shape as you can see so to show you because you know it's winter we have no like we could take as long as we want with this effect and it would not dry before we get to it that's one of mom's I don't know how I ended up with that. Anyway, it's best to use mine for my techniques. And then, so we're just coming in, we put a bit of water on our blending brush. Spray a bit of water on our. Ooh, we're on shooting mode. I was using it to spritz more siblings to get out of bed last week. There we go. Anyway, not need. And then we just come in. Not getting paint on the side of a book would be great. And yep, get it all over the crap over the little iPad. Process. Oh, we have green on our blending brush. We good did get a fair amount of that on our, on our iPad. So we're just coming in and brushing that up the side, and because it's a high flow, most of it comes off. In the first go it's not actually that thick so it means that it does come off quite easily things like that just give me one minute please and just cleaning up my ipad so that we're not that bad i've already got lots of paint on it i have to clean off quite regularly right so we've got a bit of color there we've got a bit of a flick a bit of a splat you can still see where the curve is and everything else like that but we've got a general sort of colour. We might just come in and it's a bit more natural when we splat it. Saves us some of the work. If you can get it on the right curve it does cover most of the page. But I need I do like how it ended up I'm just spreading out just a few of the bits and pieces, see? Not too much. And then while we're here just so that it's a bit of balance. We're just going to come in 
and put the tiniest little bit of it on our finger and spread it along the edges like we're inking just so that it doesn't look so random over that side like I know it's barely visible on this side here like it's just like an after note type feeling but it does look good and it will make sense in a minute so we're just coming in And dry our paint and then after we dry it we'll do the next step So while we leave that to dry a little bit more naturally. So just to explain the difference of high flows, because I don't think we've used high flows that often in my classes. So this is a fluorescent one. And as you can see here, it's got a paint slab on it. Uh, this is the golden one. So they have like a paint swatch on this. Um, and this is so you can see the transparency of it. So as you can see, this is very transparent. Like you can see the three black lines in it, whereas this one here, this is their paint slab on that, and you can barely see the lines underneath that, like, if you put it on the right angle, at the right light, and squint your eyes really hard, you can see it. So, as you can see, this high flow is quite transparent, and it's fluorescent, and then, like, it has a directions of use and all the rest of it, but um, it's pretty much the same as any acrylic paint, it's just a bit more liquidy. Um, it is a bit more temperamental, so it's better to store it upright uh, and making sure that you've sealed the bottle. Because they do dry out, obviously, if you don't seal the bottle. Oh, hello, Margaret. And hi, hi, Diane. So we're just coming in and we'll heat it a little bit more. stencil and our black paint. Just want to make sure our black paint is definitely activated. Stick it here and I'm choosing here because it's just off centre. It's really light and easy. And I'm using this black just because that yellow is quite bright. So putting black over it shouldn't be able for our eyes to focus on it a bit more and see it as yellow and not as green from the tingy bit that we had from the um, blending brush. Because I had a bit of green on my blending brush. So. And the... High flow activated it. If you don't want that to happen, just make sure your blending brush is 100% clean. I'm not the best at it. I fully admit to that. Uh, art products definitely do dial me. But not insane that I also use mine for kids' classes. So, yeah. so we got that one there. Which I do like. I think that's quite cool. It being like that, but if we also come in now over here, I'm 
and just drink some of them up the same way each time. And then we could come in and do it like So I'm just adding pattern into our area over here. Just a little bit more. Over right, here. Yeah. Okay. If we add this one on top and we put in just gonna chalk on my dark and gray. That's We're just going to mix some of this pitch paint in with this brown that we've already got. And once it decides to come out, there we go. So we're going to grab a palette knife once I find it. For the yay knife. So palette knife. So we grab our palette knife. Mix. I do think that's a nice dark brown now. We will need just a little bit more of it though for this technique. So we're just going to come in to get out just a little bit more of the brown paint. Meals, you need to go and clean your teeth. It's time for bed. Well, go and ask Snowy to get you some brownie. You should have taken it out of the oven by now. Get mom to have a look at the brownie. Brownie should not be smushy. Right, there we go. Now we've got enough of that colour. And here we come. So we're just going to put this down here. Like so.
So you got that in the middle. It looks kind of like a thumbprint. And then actually what we might turn around. We might turn it just around. Have a look. So it's not. Hundred percent to there, but it's there. Got all the excess ink off that. Look. I do think it looks quite like it's different. And then we just come in with some orange. But first we're going to a little bit. Just get it so then it drips naturally. Look at that. She's not eating chocolate with milk, is she? No. Okay, good. Right, and then... Nana gave us some um, those old gold fingers and I just gave one to Amelia. Is she okay to drink milk? Not really, no. She can't have chocolate and milk together. Give You were already over your bedtime. No, take it to mum. She just ate it. Well, then she can't have milk. Sorry, my little sister can't have milk after eating chocolate. Going to be cleaning up on it. Don't chase yourself. There we go. Just coming in. I'm not going to 100% take this white up. Just so then looks kind of normal, and we're going to come in and do it from the edge here. And we'll go over that add back stripe is there, but that's okay. It looks like it's leading in, slash being taken over by that point. 
just gives it a bit more direction. And we might come do just to. I know I just hand draw those, but if you use the stencil in your package, you should also be able to make that there. I just don't want to have to clean my stencil and then do lines, my pencil lines with it. I think I could just do it by hand. Right, so we've got those, and then if we definitely feel like it's missing something. Hmm. Maybe a flick of white. Or Actually, oh, that's a great idea. Let's paint these white and our other chipboards. Where's our number three? Wow. I'm seeing skyscapers. Oh, true. Didn't even think about that when I was drawing it. Right, so let's just grab. Oh, fingers ain't really clean. Don't look behind brown. Oh, didn't. Okay, cool. So let's just grab our, our chipboards and give them a bit of a coat. Our grey chippies or chippy cup greys. You know what? I can't really remember. Anyway, so we've got that one there. We're going to have to give them two coats. Just because I would prefer them to be bright white. Okay. And it's okay if you have to come on doing three coats. It's better to do thin and multiple coats and doing thick coats and get the blodgies in some areas and not fully covered in others. I do not have much on my fingers at all. As you can see, I'm barely covering them when I come in. We come and do our second coat.
Right. So now that we've got them coated, let me show you kind of what they look like. I'm just getting the lid back on my gesso, rather uncoordinatedly. Nothing like my lack of coordination to kick in. So we've got our three barbs or heartbeats or what you want to you want to call them. Wings. Um, I don't know. Just drew it. And then the two butterflies. Now, what I can do. Just going to grab our flat tip paintbrush. Dunking in our copper just a little bit. We're just dividing it. Heartbeats or noise, sound, what? Doodling. Just give me something that looks like it. <laughs> Signpost, anything. Okay. Um, tell mom it's either a heartbeat, heartbeat sound, or um, a doodle, a doodle or a sketch. You can put signpost in there as well. Give us some options. What about squiggle lines? Yep, yeah, squiggle lines it is. So squiggle lines. Or barbed wire. Actually, it would go really well with Clutch Garden. I mean, not Clutch Garden, I'm a cute as farm. I just did that to darken a few of the areas where we're going to go. And then... Just come in while those dry before we put matte medium over top of them. And with our gold pen, that hopefully works. Oh my gosh, it works. So we just... Knocking things over with my feet. And then I'm just going to come in. So you guys might not see that very far away, but it does make all the difference.
Two, and we use the squiggle lines as well. And two stencils. Well, a friend will be back in a second. Which stencil? I use both of them. Love how you make these colours look beautiful. They are not my go-to colours usually. Yeah, you've just got to be open to trying them. Um, I don't mind this colour palette. It can be a little bit challenging at first. Thank you. Yeah, they can be a bit challenging to work with sometimes because they get quite bright and sometimes the brown just doesn't um, lighten it enough. But other times you can get it to work really well and when that happens it's really nice. So let's lay out our, where our butterfly is not going to go. Oh, thank you, Millie. Yeah, I just got brown colored on. We'll go and wash your hands then. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I do like our butterflies there and there. I'm not 100% sold. The white, I do think we need it, but I do think it needs to be a bit more. Yeah, maybe not place like that. And then I'll swiggle lines. And... Hmm. Let's grab out our colour, our uh, more colours for a minute. There's our. We might come in with this leftover dark paint that we have mixed. And just add a little bit of water to it. So it's not a hundred percent dark. It's a little bit lighter than the middle bit.
Oh, I do like that. I've just come in and I'm dry brushing. Well, I'm kind of dry brushing. I am adding a little bit of water because I don't have much of this dark brown that I made up. Just around the edges and it's kind of... I know it's making it a little bit darker, but I do like how the iridescence is coming out. Now that fluoro was a lot more highlighted than it is fluoro because it's actually come through as I've done in other classes before and showing you that the fluoro always comes up on top of the acrylic paints that are painted over top of it, as long as it's a thin layer. So it's come up on top and shown that it's a fluoro and so is this iridescent. And then this brown's gone into the background and is coming through it and then out the middle here. I do think so. I do you think that looks quite nice? And I do like how there's a little bit of white still coming through. Now when we place these down. Oh, I think that actually looks quite... Quite nice. What do you think? Maybe there and there. What do you think we put one of the butterflies over here? We have the other one flying by itself. Mm, no. Both butterflies over here. And I think if we just come in. great brush and just a little bit of white into here coming down and then across And we spread that out with our thumb on that um, side. It makes me a bundle is 1945. 1945? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Makes me a bundle is 1945. They've got a bit of a ridge now. Bit of a trick way of making a ridge. I think we just need to stick down our butterflies and stuff now. What do you guys think? Yes? No? Maybe? Yes. Right, let's grab our glue. Which is glued together. <laughs> Unlike the usual. Let me see if we've got any more left in this tube. Oh, I do. Oh. Should I look at that. So we're just coming on the back of this chipboard. 
is putting a fair amount of coat on because it is quite a thick piece of collage and it also the chipboard is fairly absorbent which is why we had to do two layers of the white as well so but doing a thick amount of glue it means it's not flopping Go. Okay. Uh, just gel matte medium. We should have some in stock. Last well, time I checked, it's just um, a thick art glue. Helps things stick down. You can also stick things with gesso. I do find, when I have to do it, I find it a little bit of a waste. Um, unless you want your brass paper or vellum to be opaque. Just because, you know, I use a lot of white paint already. So, naturally, um, I don't like wasting it. But, yeah. So, yeah, just... Just gel medium matte. Don't know why it did that. I don't know why it flashed. I'm surely sorry about that. And then we just come in and do you want to make Amelia? Your cards are falling on Maddie. One of Amelia's playing cards on her desk is falling on Maddie. Just took out a bit of that um, high flow fluorescent colour. And we're just going to come in. Mm, maybe not that end, just go this end. And we're just coming in and doing some dots coming out of our butterflies. One or two on them. Okay, I need some help getting my last card off of the chair. Okay, can I wait until I'm finished and have you cleaned your teeth? Nine and nine. Go clean teeth on the ones on the sun sugar the last pine cup. Good. And it's on the chair. Yep. Which oh. I try to grab it, but the Maddie's floor is gone. Okay. Are you good? Yeah. Okay. It hurts. Go on, show She had her first day back at school today. Okay, right. And then... Last thing I need. It's just a few of these lines.
that. I think we might be done. Just a few bits and pieces. So tonight's um, bundle is $19.95. It's got two stencils and the two packs of chipboards, the two butterflies and the squiggles. They are also all sell separately, so if you know, if you only want one of them, you don't have to buy the bundle. Completely understand. Or if you need more butterflies, once again, on the cement and squiggle lines. But yes, yeah, so that is today's class. So we've got little dots that we drew along with the fluorescent dots. As you can see, we're going to do like a close-up. Go around. And back this way. So thank you all for coming tonight. We are back for our weekly classes tomorrow at 9.30 in the July group for card making and then at 7pm on Wednesday for uh, scrapbooking. Sorry of a brain moment there uh when uh and then over the weekend which starts on thursday for all of you lovely ladies we'll be warming up your creativity with uh lots and lots of classes so we're going to aim to do i think about five to seven maybe classes a day um don't quote me on that with uh some of our more tropical ranges because we're all feeling like we need a bit of warmth and uh, so we're going to have some new product over the weekend. We're going to be using some older product, uh, going over a few different techniques, obviously doing classes. It's all part of the Geeks weekend. Uh, and uh, we'll be, we won't be finishing on Saturday. Uh, Geeks is typically Thursday to Saturday. We're not doing that. We're going to go until Sunday. Well, midday Sunday because Amelia has a birthday party on Sunday. So we're going to go until then. And, uh, yeah, it should be great fun. So lots of classes this weekend. Lots of them are going to be free. and Well, all of them apart from, I think, three are free because they'll be in the Gix classroom. I don't know how the Gix classroom works, so uh, Elisa will explain that slash my mum uh, tomorrow morning. I don't know why I said slash my mum or if you know that she's my mum. Anyway, um, but thank you all for coming. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're watching this later, thank you for watching, and if you're watching it now, cool beans. And we'll see you all throughout the week, because there's lots of stuff happening. So thank you all for coming. Bye.